So hopefully you uh, did exactly as I said and tried out these three on your own. Here's what the answers should have been. Um, for that first one, if we're adding heat, we're increasing the temperature, which causes it to say, hey, it's too hot in here. Let's try and cool ourselves down. So you'd move away from the heat, shift left. That would make your SO2 and O2 increase, your SO3 decrease. And the second one, if we removed some SO3, our teeter-totter on the right-hand side would suddenly become lighter. So the reaction has to shift right and try to produce more SO3 since you took some away. The SO2 would decrease, O2 decreases because we're moving away from them. The reaction would feel hotter because you're moving towards that heat energy. In three, if the pressure was decreased, the way we decrease pressures is by increasing volumes. So if there's all this extra space, the reaction says, let's take advantage of that extra space. Let's make more gas molecules. There's more gas molecules on the left than there are on the right. Two SO2s plus your one oxygen gas molecule, right? There's three on the left-hand side versus two on the right-hand side. Takes advantage of the extra space. Let's make more. SO2 and O2 increase. SO3 decreases. And it gets colder because you're moving away from that heat energy. Here are some tricky ones uh, that at first glance you might not know the answers to. This guy, if we have hydrogen and chlorine gases reacting to make some hydrochloric acid, and our stress is that we're going to increase the volume. Well, if you give it more space, it would normally shift to the side where there's more gas molecules, right? Take advantage of that extra space. But if you count the number of gas molecules on the left and on the right, they're exactly the same. There's no benefit to going shifting left or shifting right. So if you increase the volume, nothing happens. It doesn't disrupt your balance because you have the same number of gas molecules on both sides. In the second tricky example there, it says you added neon gas to the reaction flask. It sounds like it should do something, right? But if you remember, neon gas is a noble gas. It doesn't react with anything. So that neon gas isn't going to react with your hydrogen. It's not going to react with the chlorine or the hydrochloric acid. So if there's no reactions taking place and you're putting that gas in that flask, nothing's going to happen. It doesn't disrupt your equilibrium because it doesn't do anything to the hydrogen, chlorine, or hydrochloric acid. Right. In the third example where we're dumping a catalyst into that reaction, a catalyst's job is to speed up a reaction, make it get there faster. Well, the catalyst speeds up both the forward and the reverse reactions. So once again, nothing happens. We'll get to equilibrium in a shorter amount of time. It won't take as long, but it won't disrupt that balance of how many products or how many reactants we have at equilibrium. Well, if you keep looking at these tricky ones, you're probably noticing a pattern by now. Right? Nothing, nothing, nothing. And number four, where we're adding, adding some carbon to some water to make hydrogen gas and carbon monoxide. If you're following the patterns here, you could probably see that number four is going to be a nothing as well. So why? Why, if we add carbon to our test tube, would that not have any impact? It has to do with the state of matter on that carbon. Carbon's a solid. And since carbon is a solid, remember we don't include solids or pure liquids in our equilibrium expressions because they don't have molarities. And if you don't have a molarity, you can't go into that KEQ expression. You're not going to do anything to equilibrium. So since carbon is a solid, it has no molarity, 
also no impact on equilibrium.